Okay, acid base time. So student is supplied with 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed of potassium hydroxide and also some propanoic acid. And it gives me the acid dissociation constant of propanoic acid. It's a weak bronze titillary acid. What is meant by a weak, a weak, a weak acid and the bronze titillary acid. So first of all, a weak acid means it partially dissociates. A bronze titillary acid means it is a proton donor. Calculate the pH of the potassium hydroxide, of uh, 0.5 potassium hydroxide. You can do this in various ways. Um, so this is the way I tend to do it. Other ways are available. Um, so if you calculate the pOH, pOH is minus log to the base 10 of the concentration of OH minus. So that equals... Uh, one day I'll be able to work it for. That equals minus log to the base 10 um, of 0 0.500. Um, if you do that, that comes to 0 0.30. And then the pH is just 14 minus the pOH, which is 0 0.30. And therefore your pH is 13. So the shoot dilutes <coughs> the 25 centimetres cubed of propanoic acid by adding water until we get to 100 centimetres cubed. Write an expression for Ka. So Ka is going to equal the concentration of H plus times by the concentration of C2H5COO minus aqueous divided by the concentration of the unassociated acid, like so. Okay, calculate the pH of dilute solution. So initially my concentration was 0 0.48, but I've diluted it by a factor of four. So my new concentration of C2H5COOH is going to equal 0 0.480 divided by 4, which comes quite nicely to ooh, that doesn't quite look, um, 0 0.120 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, I've now got that, so we can find that into, we need to find the concentration of H+. Plus. The concentration of H+, plus is the square root of Ka times your concentration. Um, so my Ka, they told me earlier, as being 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5. My concentration, I've just worked out to be 0.120. So I do that, square root it, and I should get to 1.273 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, and then you bung that into your pH expression. pH is minus log to the base 10 of H, concentration of H plus. So that's minus log to the base 10 of 1.2. 73 times 10 to the minus 3. Oops, a daisy. Um, and if you do that, hopefully you get to your final answer of 2.90. Oh, right, so aqueous propanoic acid reacts with carbonates and alkalis. Write the full equation for the reaction of aqueous propanoic acid with sodium carbonate. So let's do this. Uh, we have got C2H5COOH plus Na2CO3. That's going to give me sodium propanoate C2H5COO minus Na plus. And it's a carbonate, so I make CO2 and also H2O. Um, I'm going to have to make two of those so i need two of those like so write the ionic 
equation for the action of propanoic acid with aqueous potassium hydroxide. This is your bog standard one, H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous goes to give me water. Right, buffer time. A student prepares a buffer solution um, and the concentrations of both propanoic acid and propanoate are both one mole per decimeter cube, so they're the same. Um, calculate the pH of this buffer solution. Because they're the same, we can simplify our equation to the pH is equal, pH is equal to pKa. Your, P, uh, your Ka is uh, so it's minus log to the base 10, 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5, and that is going to equal 4.87 to two decimal places. Okay, they then, which is this, do this one. A small amount of aqueous ammonia is added to the buffer solution. Explain how the buffer solution would respond to the added um, ammonia. So the NH3 would react with the H minus ions. So the NH3 plus H plus would give me ammonium ion. Therefore, the concentration of H plus would decrease and therefore the equilibrium would shift to the right hand side to replace the H plus. So ammonium reacts with H plus, equilibrium shifts to the right hand side to replace it. Right, so time for a big buffer calculation. A student adds 6.075 grams of magnesium to one decimal cube for this buffer solution. Calculate the new pH of, calculate the pH of the new buffer solution, give your answer to two decimal places. So here we go. Um, first of all, I've got magnesium in grams. That's, that's no good to me, is it? So let's do moles of magnesium. So moles of magnesium, is going to equal my mass divided by my molar mass of magnesium, 24.3, which comes to 0.25. So now we need to think about how will that actually react. So magnesium will obviously react with the propanoic acid. Um, so we've got propanoic acid, C2H5COOH, will react with magnesium to give me magnesium propanoate, which is C2H5COO minus. I've got two of those because obviously magnesium is Mg2 plus plus H2 like so. So I need two of those boys there to get that to work. So I need to work out my concentration of propanoic acid and the propanoate ion to be able to work out my buffer. So my concentration of C2H5COOH, it was one mole per decimeter cubed. However, um, for every one of those, I have lost, so I had, I added 0.25 moles of magnesium for every 0.2, well, for 0.25 moles of magnesium, I've lost 0.5 moles of propanoic acid because it's a one to two reaction. So my new concentration is one minus 0.5, which is 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed. But in this reaction, I have made more propanoate ions. So again, I started with one mole per decimeter cubed. For every one magnesium, I gained two more propanoate, so that's plus 0.5 moles. So my new concentration is 1.5 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay. So, sorry about that. Okay, so now let's bung this into our equation. 
So pH is equal to pKa minus log to the base 10 of the concentration of C2H5COOH divided by the concentration of C2H5COO minus. If you bung that in, you get minus log to the base 10 of 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5 minus log 0.5 divided by 1.5 like so and that equals 4.87 plus 0.48 which gives you a final pH of 5.35 Five. That is quite a tough calculation to do. The main thing is getting this ratio right, but don't get despondent, keep going. Even if you maybe mess up here, try and get some ratio and you may get some credit down here.